What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Critical Overlord here. So this will be a video primarily just discussing Scream 7 and a theory about Leslie Mocker once more. How she can be the overarching antagonist of Scream 7. She won't be someone who is going to have any ties to Scream 6 or any real ties to the Ghostface Sprees of 5 besides her son getting caught up in the midst of it and dying unfortunately. But she would be like a subversion a subversion of what many people are already expecting and that's they're expecting christina to be the killer in scream 7. she won't have anything tied to those movies the past two that we've gotten but we will learn something about christina that ties into why leslie is now finally snapped uh, and it's just something that's been boiling and boiling and boiling for many years ever since she lost her brother, Stu Mocker, back in the original Scream movie. Uh, so this would be the same angle you've seen me talk about plenty of times on this channel. Somebody who hates horror movies, they hate the Stab franchise, they hate the exploitation of everything about these sprees that constantly happen and they want it all to stop. And this would all have the backdrop still of a true crime series that's taking place to parallel Scream 3. So in Scream 6, we learned that Christina cut off Sam and Tara. Sam was cut off after she told Tara about Billy and Tara cut Christina off after she cut Sam off. So we know Scream 6 is like a year after 5. So who knows what Christina has gotten herself into between those two movies. And the time that I can safely assume will pass before we jump into Scream 7. We know that Christina also became an alcoholic to cope with her screw-ups as a parent and a wife during her years with Tara as a single mother prior to the events of five and six. Who knows how she may have attempted to start a new family after Sam ruined it in her mind. These failed attempts might have contributed to her becoming an alcoholic. Her alcoholic ways seem to have unintentionally aided Amber in learning Sam was Billy's daughter. Something that I have seen many people say doesn't make sense completely because how could Amber have been the only person who knew about it? In my mind, I always took Amber's words as Christina unintentionally had a moment while drunk and let it slip, but only Amber was around to experience this knowledge, I guess. Now, eventually, Christina, we know, joins an AA group. We know she spent Screen 5 in London on a business trip, but chances are she still is a recovering alcoholic. After she cut off Sam and Tara, I'm imagining her still attending these AA sessions in Woodsboro. And who does she happen to run into? Leslie Mocker. Leslie became an alcoholic herself after Vince died, but his death sparked more of a relapse for Leslie. Leslie would let us in on the fact that all the trauma she's had since Stu died made her cope through drinking, but finding a stable family over the years eventually changed that until it didn't leslie and christina become friendly during the events of scream six during these aa sessions leslie has always had some sort of repressed hatred towards sydney dewey gail and other survivors of the sprees that she believes just do not deserve the lives they have and they definitely don't deserve to exploit the tragedies for profit the way gail weathers continues to do leslie believes all these survivors do is attract trouble and ruin the lives of others that are left behind after each spree she's essentially been projecting her frustrations onto them but all of that changed when she met Vince's father and became a mother to Vince, allowing her to become more content and fulfilled in life and let some of that hatred go. While raising Vince, she was even mocked by a few people who knew she was Stu's sister, let's say, and they would tell her that Vince would end up being a killer just like Stu. So, you know, being mocked for things that your brother did that you really had no control over and then having some of that projected onto your own offspring in Vince, all of that I can see definitely taking a toll on any person who just wants to live in peace without being blamed for Stu's actions, something her parents also experienced as well, which we could also find out led to them being ran out of Woodsboro. Once Vince died, though, she relapsed and became an alcoholic once more and got divorced from Vince's dad. Those AA meetings allowed her to meet Christina and their brief friendship quickly became inspiration for the events of Scream 7 because Christina foolishly confessed to Leslie that she knew what Billy and Stu were up to in 96, thus reviving Leslie's thoughts that several people around her do not deserve the lives that they've attained from these sprees and Christina has now prepared herself to the top of Leslie's list. Leslie's ultimate goal during the spree will be to frame Christina as the crazy ex-lover of Billy Loomis, who finally snapped after her daughter ruined her attempts to have a happy family. So she went after her daughter's her daughters, their friends, and anyone else like Gail, Sydney, etc., who interfered in her mind with her long-lasting desire to be with Billy Loomis. This is the alibi she would come up with to frame Christina Carpenter for all of the events in Scream 7. With a plan like that, Leslie gets revenge against Christina, the person who was really to blame for all of this in her mind because Christina had a chance to stop Billy and Stu, but she didn't. If she had stopped them or gone to the cops with what she knew, then the Beckers wouldn't have lost their daughter Casey. Sydney wouldn't have killed her brother Stu. Gail wouldn't have had the chance to always profit off of these sprees, a shitty franchise about them wouldn't have started, and her son Vince might still be alive. 
And again, there would be an accomplice for Leslie, so don't worry about that. Leslie has a partner who hates true crime just as much as she does and is actively working on this. There's they're actively also somebody working on this new true crime Woodsboro series. I'm imagining to get close to Gail since she's also going to be a primary target in this movie of mine. Sam and Tara are basically primary targets. So Christina can watch her kids suffer for what she did and she can understand what it feels like to lose your children but because in Leslie's warped mind again and a lot of it really isn't warped because Christina would actually be to blame for all of this to some degree if she confessed something like that to Leslie that you knew exactly what was going on in 96 and you did nothing thus somebody who has lost everything and been mocked for years because of the actions of her brother all that could have been avoided had you not have been so selfish so Sydney is basically a target because she killed Stu and that's that's with Christina's foolish confessions that just makes it even more like because Christina decided to confess that to Leslie her foolish confessions it just makes his death that much more upsetting to Leslie now because it's something that could have been avoided if Christina had told the cops what she knew was going on in 96 but she didn't because as we would find out she was planning to actually run off with Billy Loomis after he got away with it raise uh Sam with him leave Tara's dad break up with him she only stuck with Tara's dad because Billy got killed and didn't succeed in anything he was planning she lied to him about who who Sam actually was and then of course he found out years later but I think this would be a nice way to subvert what many people think they're going to get in Scream 7 many people already think we're going to get Christina Carpenter as the killer which can still happen but I think Leslie really could be the one that that shocks a lot of people if they again subvert expectations by not making the killer uh, Christina Carpenter and going down the path of making it Vince's mother someone who has had all this pent up rage for years and it was revived by a new piece of information that she's going to fill in to us during her monologue and it's going to be something that loops back to the first movie and it'll be a grand finale in that way and again all of this would be intended to commentate on how the victims or the relatives of these victims of these tragedies how do they feel about the constant exploitation of certain things that happen in the media like with the stab franchise like with things like the Dahmer series or any other thing related to true crime and how it has negatively impacted their lives you guys can chime in down below let me know what you think about all this down in the comment section below if you haven't already make sure you subscribe turn on post notification and never miss a video in the description i will have links on my social media accounts i'm on facebook twitter and instagram you can message me there of course let me know if there's any movies news or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future and with all that in mind guys i will see you in the next video